Hello world, how's it going? Hope you guys are all doing great. If not, as always, I hope it gets better for you. So today I wanted to share with you guys Corey McElroy of Aquarium Co-op's water heater system and how he's got his water set up in his fish room. Uh, he talked about it with me in on film and I wanted to share it with you guys because uh, it's just something to think about, especially if you got a big fish room. It kind of takes out some error that we may be able to safeguard our fish with. So anyways, enough of me blabbering. Let's do this. I'm sure that makes no sense. It makes all the sense in the world to me. Like I've got pets in this building that I can't live without. And so I've dealt with power going out and all that kind of stuff. And I wanted to make sure this building would be perfect, even if I'm not around. And so... This is a tankless water heater. It will do, so we do four water changes a day in all the tanks. It has unlimited hot water. It's a commercial grade one. I can, you know, dang near a fire hose, 78 degree water forever. Like, so that, you know, something like this costs you three or $4,000 to get installed, but it means the 800 gallon tank and all these things where I've got these exotic fish that I'm, you know, I'm, I have to take care of, it's my job. It makes me get through a power outage because worst case scenario, I could do warm water changes, even if there's no power. Like, yes, I have to plug in a tiny little thing to like a battery backup to make sure that, you know, the electrical components will fire, but it'll work. Then I also put in a natural gas heater. Both of these run off natural gas. That's why I can work with the power being out. So we can, I can heat the entire building. We don't run too many heaters unless it's like a specific warm water pleco or something like that. We heat the entire building right now. It's 74 degrees in here. And that usually puts the tanks with lights and uh, filters and that kind of stuff. 75, 76, that's where I like to run most of my tanks. The lower tanks will run about 74, 75. And it stays very, very stable in here. So even if we were working on a big project, you got a bucket of fish sitting on the floor, it literally doesn't even change temperature. And because we change water on every tank 4x a day, I can take one fish from one tank to the other and it's the same water parameters always. And so it makes it really easy. And because we do this, if I don't know if you've seen this video yet or not, but at the store, we're doing the exact same system. So fish can come from my store to here and vice versa, like no acclimation is needed. It makes it really easy for what I like to do and that's breed fish, import fish, sell fish, all that kind of stuff. But this took a lot of infrastructure because we had to come off the main house, you know, shoot a line under the yard, get permits done. It was a bunch of crazy work. And again, it was one of those situations where they assume people want to live out here and I'm trying to convince them like, no, no, no. I'm just crazy about fish tanks. Like you see this 800 gallon tank here, you see these tanks, like you see all this going on? This is just for that. No one's living here, we're not putting in a shower. Like they just, it was really hard to convince people that I'm that level of crazy. Cause they're like, no one would spend this amount of money for fish. And I'm like, but my entire career is fish. And we finally, the first guy, the first two guys wouldn't sign off on it. They're like, no. I eventually got the head like top of the totem pole guy for the natural gas and all that. And I was able to connect with my turtles. Again, everyone falls in love with the turtles. He's like, you know, I was in Hawaii, saw the turtles, so cool. I really respect what you're doing here. And from there, he's like, yeah, I'd sign off on this. I clearly see you're just obsessed with fish, you know, and I invite him, like, come to my store. Like, this is purely for fish. And so it worked out, but it took months to get this through, you know, and we couldn't really continue building and it was real weird. Like, they had to keep checking. I have to, I had to put all kind of backflow pressure assemblies. There's all this equipment in the yard you had to put in because they were afraid if water backflowed into my house, we all gonna get sick and that kind of stuff. We know that like, that's not gonna happen, but they can't prove that it would never happen ever. And you know, give me a dollar, I would drink my own aquarium water. We're changing it four times a day. It's basically water at this point, like just tap water. So, but it is nice, you know, we've got we have to look away our sink. We do have a sink over there that only makes 78 degree water, but that's because when I rinse sponge filters and stuff, that's the way I want to do it, you know? So I guess I can go, you can see what we've built in. We've got the stainless steel sink because I like to clean tanks and all that kind of stuff right here. And then up top we've got, people a lot of times ask, how do you make sure that you don't have chlorine in your water? Well, we have a whole house filter pulling out chlorine. We've got backups for it because they swap those out. We've got all the solenoids. So this does our north wall, our east wall, and our 800 gallon tank. And it's all controlled by a controller right here, like an irrigation controller. So I can just flip a valve, hit a button, start changing water. I can do hundreds of gallons. I actually realized there's a limit to this thing. It's four hours. And when I redid the 800 gallon, I realized four hours won't fill an 800 gallon. It takes longer than four hours. So even maxing that thing out won't 
no. make that happen. I forgot about one other trick we have with this system, and that is I wanted cold water and warm water on the inside. So we have 78 degree water, we have cold water, both at the sink. We also have that outside though, so that I can do water changes even in the winter and that type of stuff for the ponds that we have outside. And that would be like rice fish, and we've got a koi pond in the front. Um, because I noticed groundwater is a lot of times way colder than the water that was in your pond. You know, if it's coming out at 36 degrees and my pond is 50 degrees, that's a problem. So I can dial in that temperature and do water changes even on the pond during the winter and all that, all run off this system. And it was kind of like a why not? At that point, you spent so much money, it's like, well, you know, it's an extra hundred bucks. We could put warm water on the outside of your building. I'm like, yes, let's do that. And we found out it's great for washing little chihuahua dogs that I have and that kind of stuff. So it's kind of nice to have that, but you know, unlimited hot water. My house doesn't have water this much water. We have a normal water heater in the house because we don't use that much. We just take showers and yes, I do take showers every once in a while. And uh, so yeah, I just, I like that tip because it, it is really handy. You know, if you need to set up like a 200 gallon pond outside and you can fill it with 78 degree water, boom, you're pretty much ready to go. Take a cycle sponge filter, add some fish. You don't have to go, well, I got to let it settle for a few days or anything like that. And it allows me to, let's say I got fish and I know it's just warming up. If it's 78 degrees in here, roughly 76, and it's 78 out there, I can put them straight out. I don't have to go, well, how am I gonna acclimate them down from 76 down to 68? Cause that's what they're at outside right now. Cause it's still warming up for the summer. It allows me to play around with that. And I'm, I'm a sucker for outside little ponds, so. Oh, I love yeah. outside pond, tub and whatever you wanna mm -hmm. call it. Call it what you like, I'm down. Right. <laughs> and there you have it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and have a great one. Until next time, everybody, peace.